<laughs> and now, uh, right. now back to our show. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so sorry. Here we go. What is the speed of dark? <laughs> well, it's interesting that you can ask that. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe demonstrated by a logical proof uh, years ago that the universe was uh, not so limited in size because otherwise all the stars would light it up. But, uh, but the speed of dark is as instant as the speed of light because darkness returns the moment light is vanished. Therefore, the two things have the same speed, which is also the same speed as radio transmission. So I hope you listen to radio shows, particularly uh, the one on KFA, 94.1 FM, the Buzzfeed Edmonton Show, Friday morning, 325 AM. How much pot? Could the pot smoke or pot? Could the smoke pot guy smoke? If the smoke pot guy could smoke pot. Well, but he can smoke pot. Oh, he smokes pot? No, he smokes as much pot as, uh, as he, he can already. You know, I, uh, when you're a pot smoker, you can't think about uh, smoking pot a lot to the uh, exclusion of other things. And, Maybe you might have thought sometime, uh, hey, what if I just rolled about 100, 200 joints, you know, laid them out on a table and just started smoking one and then smoked the other and smoked the other? How far would you get? Yes, yeah, how far would you get? Before your lungs hemorrhaged and you fell forward in the grip of a massive coronary. Well, um, this, of course, depends on the individual and his stamina. Just as you want to get in training to run a marathon or to swim the English Channel, so you'll want to make sure that your lungs are in tip-top condition before you permanently ruin them with the uh, gadget of uh, endless marijuana joint. But as you practice, practice makes perfect and your limit increases. On the other hand, you are talking about a fallible human mechanism and there is wear and tear which may, in the end, curtail the arc of your enjoyment. I thought I was going to okay. smoke the body until... Well, no, man. Oh, Jesus Christ! Are you kidding? Come on, guys! Come this on, mighty guys. handsome! Come on, we're in college now! Yeah, a college of hard knocks. O-E-D. <laughs> O-E-D. from Jenner and she wants to know who do I gotta blow to get a drink around here? <laughs> well, well, all you have to do, Jenner, is ask the question that we like. Of course. And I think you already have. So come on up and get a delicious Jameson's uh, shot and you don't have to take the uh, obligatory um, uh, would, you, uh, would you like an shot? Pickle, whichever one you want. Can I this is here, just you're gonna have to drink out of the bottle. I lost a glass. I used to have a glass. I haven't seen Jenner since she came to see us at space. Hi. I haven't seen you in like four years. Oh, okay. Remember when we used to do this show? You used to be not any good and yeah, it's still like not much has changed. <laughs> is feeling sorry for someone a good enough reason to tolerate their bullshit? <laughs> Come on, Hal. There is a limit to the empathy we can feel. Uh, by indulging in the pathetic fallacy, we can imagine that the other person feels exactly as we do. But this is not really entirely true. In fact, it is probably not even partially true. And all we can do is attempt to correct our vanity-inspired actions and hope that the smug, fatuous satisfaction we feel of approval at us uh, has some benefit for others. 
However, at least the politeness and social fiction give us the consolation of choosing that belief if uh, we take that path. Give him a shot of wind. Yeah. Forget. forget. No, I was just trying to see how stoned you were. There's no forget here. Okay, what is the Michelin Man's real name? By George, it does seem to be the Michelin Man. Okay, now, uh, Wait a minute. we call him the Michelin Man today, but he did have a name back in the past. No way. Oh, yes, he did. Before the 1920s, in fact. And the name of the Michelin Man what? was, and therefore is, since nobody ever changed it, Bibendu. What? His name's Bibendu. Bullshit. <laughs> not only is this not bullshit, but it contains a singular irony. Because today, you can be in a world of hurt if you get picked up on a DUI. Isn't that right? They do everything they can to make your life miserable. Yes, but they do. Bibendu is short for a, a famous Roman saying, or a quote from a Roman poem, which begins, Nunc est bibendum. Now what that means when you translate it from the Latin is, now it's time to get drunk. <laughs> Nunc est bibendum, as in bibulus, in bile, to get drunk. So this tire safety guy, his name means, get drunk. His name is Bibendum, which means to get drunk and then get out on the road and roar away at 80 miles an hour. They drive off to Autobahn and to the bar, right at the side, they get slots of Bibendum, and then they roar away at any speed on the Autobahn where there is no speed limit at all. And thus, the legacy of Bibendum, the mission. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Howe. Oh, that would be interesting. I have a $10 question. Woo! $10. Now we have all our small denominations represented. I want to know what happened to Valerie, the door girl. <laughs> she was really something, wasn't she? <laughs> yes, she melted hearts. Yes. The gentleman especially yeah. like Valerie. Now, how did she do as far as collecting the uh, the gelt from uh, the boot? She was a terrible door, door girl. Yes, I had the feeling your yeah. mind was not on the uh, oh, no. world of change, making of getting and spending, oh. which we ladies have powers. But um, the last time I saw her was when she went on one of those bus trips. Maybe it was a Key Rob film phone? Yeah. Uh, and I there she is. Him, but, yeah. She's like nine feet tall. Statuesque. Yeah. Well, whatever happened what to her? her? But I did pay ten dollars. Yeah, well, uh, apparently she went on to better things. We can only hope that she will return to uh, darken our towels again. That's it for ten bucks? Oh, all right, so perhaps I should say that uh, everyone was pleased by her winning manner and uh, pleasant smile. And I once remember when a score of stag hounds were trying to cut her out of the herd when she miraculously escaped when Don and Tracy gave her a ride home. And the frustration really? around there was uh, so discernible it could be cut in the proverbial way. That's a $10 answer? You're not going to tell her like the time she got drunk and humiliated all of us? Well, uh, it's it's not, it could be said, but it, I mean, we want to make this show about her. <laughs> of judgment as you attempt to discover for your own satisfaction whether what you are doing is 
being done correctly, or instead simply serving for all time as an example of, of infernal damn foolishness. Bearing a sick Kira. 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 Ha <laughs> ha